please welcome our very good friend, Mr. John Aloisi. Yeah. No, we're good. It's lovely, it's lovely to see you. It's uh, lovely to have you with us. Can I ask you a quick, straight off the bat, I've got to ask you a question about Spain. Now, you played in Spain. Which club? You played for Alaves in Spain? Yeah, and, and Osasuna. And Osasuna. Yeah. And who was the biggest personality, do you reckon, you played with in the dressing room while you were in Spain? Who was, like, the number one alpha dog? Um, probably Chenge Morales. He played for Uruguay uh, okay. as well. He scored against us together. I the remember that, yeah. yeah. Real big, yeah. big tall striker. Yeah. yeah, I remember him. Yeah. And he was, was he very, like, you know, he thought he was the, you know, it and a bit sort of thing, yeah? Yeah, no one wanted to tell him he wasn't because he was okay. pretty big. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk about Ronaldo. What is wrong with this guy? He, the first goal, they, they win 9 1, right? Gareth Bale scores the first goal. As he scores the goal, it, it's all Bale's work. He robs the defender, rounds the goal, he puts the ball in. Ronaldo's in the middle. They all run to Bale, and Ronaldo goes and walks off, walks back to the, to the, to the halfway line. What in is, fact, in what fact is John, up? two weeks ago, um, Gareth Bale got in the way of a Ronaldo shot, and the ball went in. Yeah. And Gareth Bale was almost apologetic to, to Ronaldo. What is it like? Well, I mean, what is, well, what's wrong with this guy? Uh, well, Ronaldo, when you're able to score 60 odd goals in a season, you get that right to be a little right. bit like that. Do you, and though? Can you, you can still yeah, be like that to your I, teammates? I think so. I think, wow. uh, and, and it's the, up to the coach to be able to manage that. Mm. And, uh, and, and Ancelotti certainly has, because mm. to be able to deal with an ego like Ronaldo, and, right. and he probably deserves that ego a little bit because of the, what he's done on the pitch, and, and still get the best out of everyone else. And they won the Champions League last year. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're, they're on track to uh, go a long way this year in, in you know, total defence uh, against Barcelona um, so and, and also so Champions League. It's an essential part of being a superstar. Well, but Messi. <laughs> 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 should know. Sometimes you just course. don't even know that you're emanating that. Yeah, yeah. Like, when, yeah. like when Moon used to do. Sh like when Moon used to do. Doing a job. He has, to, he has turned into Sam Pan. Yeah. <laughs> this is when Mooney used to do postcards. You remember that, of course. <laughs> postcards, oh. won't you send me? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry about this, John. It's, uh... But I, agree. I think I know where John's coming. As in, as in the Messi... Ronaldo uh, rivalry. Mm. It's a bit of like uh, it's a bit of Ali versus Foreman. It's it's like a bit of superstars going at it. And right. who's to say that that's not one of the great? Uh, we're going to look back and go, this game. is unbelievable, these two guys were going yeah. at the same time. But Messi doesn't have that same... When his teammates score, he hugs them and says, that's great. But he can't yeah, but, crack it. But also, the, the team is built around Messi. Right. They, they've got all those great players, but the team realises that without Messi, they probably won't win everything. They're, they're a okay. good side uh, without him, but right. they're a great side with him. And I think Real Madrid are the same. So when you were there, remember, you went to Barcelona training yeah. a few weeks ago. And is that the way... Is it always, and even in training and even in just the general vibe of the place, is that the vibe? If you, let's say you didn't know anything about football and you yeah. went to Barcelona, would you say, who's the little bloke with the limp? He's in charge. Is yeah, that... yeah, you can, you can <laughs> still, you can see it. Um, it's not that obvious because Messi's still a team player, but right. um, there was a reason why Zlatan Ibrahimovic couldn't uh, last at Barcelona because they weren't, you weren't allowed two big players or two big egos that could run the show. There was only one and that was going to be Messi right. and Zlatan had to leave because of that. So as a coach, next, you know, when you, you're now working yeah. with young players in the Melbourne Victory, so is that, that's the new job, isn't yeah. it? You're a, a development coach with the Melbourne Victory? Yeah, that's right. How's that going? Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's going well. You know, it, it? It's different because, you know, the young players, they still haven't uh, achieved what these players have achieved. So, you, you know, they, they'll listen to everything you say and, and also okay. they... they, they actually fit into a, a playing group a lot better and easier. Right. Um, but once they start to get a little bit of fame, a little bit of fortune, then you have to start managing their egos. So if a you bit see more. that in a young player, let's say you've got a kid 16, yeah. 17, who's a fantastic player, but he's got that chip on his mm. shoulder. Do you try and knock it out of him or do you go, do you know what, maybe this kid's going to be the best player in the best team, I'm just going to let him go. And that, that's part of it. You don't want to completely mm. knock it out of them, mm -hmm. but uh, you also want to, uh, them to know that they're representing the football club in Melbourne Victory and they're also rep representing uh, the, the whole team and, and myself as well because I'm the coach. So right. you don't want them to be uh, too arrogant, but you also want that little bit of arrogance yeah. that makes you them need interesting. to nurture the that's fire. Yeah. While we're there, let's talk about Tommy Rogic just for a sec. Um, we, we spoke to David Davudovic about this last week. He's at an interesting... He's at a crossroad, I guess, now, mm. as in, you know, he was... Uh, 12 months ago, he was like a, 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 the, the great white hope for, for Australia. He's had trouble with his, uh, with his fitness and is still at Celtic. Um, what happens over the next 6 to 12 months for, 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 for Rogic? Should he look for a new place to be at? Should he, should he stay the course? In your own mind, what do you reckon? 
Well, it depends. Oh, I don't know the, what the club is saying, whether they're saying if he's fully fit, if he will play. If, if they're not sure and he's not sure, I mm. think he has to go somewhere and play football. Um, first of all, he needs to be injury-free yes. and, uh, and then start playing football again on a regular basis. Because let's not forget, Tommy Rogic didn't play... He, he started playing outdoor football at the age of 15, That's 16 right. yeah, because yeah. he was playing uh, futsal. Um, and so, and he didn't have a lot of football under his belt. So now is important for him to play football on a regular basis. I've got a personal question for you, John. Wow. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry to ambush you with this one, but uh, a lot of information comes out in makeup. And our makeup lady said you've got a beautiful complexion. Now, I just, I just want to know your, your secret. Are you exfoliating with apricot pip or are you using a light moisturiser? Please. It's a good question. It's a good question. I don't use anything. Wow. Oh, wow. It's it's all all I will say that your, your questions are a little bit uh, better than Sam's. <laughs> and again, another question. Be frank, please. Yeah. Does the A-League season go for too long? Definitely not. And okay. I would, definitely not. Definitely because not. Right I'd now, I'm feeling. Yeah, but it's it's a little bit normal as well because we had the up with the Asian Cup. Yes, Every, no, everyone was on yeah. a high. Um, the Cricket World Cup ended up coming along, and yeah. then we've got the AFL season that just started. NRL season I started. I feel like we should be playing our finals now. AFL starts and the NRL starts, and I'm the type of person, I like all three codes, I like to ha have a team in all three, and I want to follow all three. I feel like our finals should be now. I feel like the A-League finals should be right now. Especially with ten teams, Johnny. Yeah. No, look, I, I think that the players need to play more games, and right. I think that if we cut it shorter, and it's only at... Uh, 18 or 20 game season, then it's too short for the players, and I think it's too short for the supporters as well. Um, because I'm a football lover, and I love AFL. I yep. went to go watch Hawthorne yesterday, so oh, well it, it's uh, yeah, they played well. Yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so you could, I think you can do both. I I, I can't see the reason but we've why. But a situation where I'm, you know, it's good for me watching the games in Brisbane. The, but the victory is playing like a baseball series. They're playing <laughs> Brisbane versus Victory twice in four days in Brisbane. That's not a good, you know. I'll probably watch both games because I have nothing else to do. But <laughs> I imagine there's not many other people that, you know, are going to be that into it. Well, that was uh, a little bit out of uh, Brisbane's power because they the, the game got rained off and yeah. then so they needed to play a catch-up right. game and that was the only uh, time they could fit it in. But uh, I think it's, it's, it's gone really well and we know that five teams can actually win the minor premiership, the Premier's Plate. Yeah. And uh, in what other league around the world, and, mm. and I'm even talking about other codes, that you have five teams That's fighting right. it out with yeah, three games true. to go, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's I true. think that you're being too negative. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not talk it down, guys. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, just just on, on those one of those teams that's vying up there is uh, Perth Glory. Uh, you've been in charge of a club where off field has been yeah. dominating the, the scene. How hard is it for for, for coach for players mm. to keep what's happening in the papers out of what's happening on the training ground? Look, as a coach and also as a player, all you can do is try and focus on the job at hand. And that's the, the players to play, coach, he, he worries about coaching. But you can't uh, also stop players from reading the paper, uh, and listening to the radio, watching television. So they are, their mind is going to be a little bit on that. And, and I think it's difficult. I think it's very difficult. When things are going wrong off the pitch and there's a lot of noise about it, you, you can probably deal with that for a week, two weeks, uh, and any longer it starts to cause problems with the performances on the pitch. Well, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about uh, junior football. I want to show you something from the under-16s. European, I think this is the qualifiers. This is Macedonia versus Gibraltar, a huge game. But what that <laughs> is, this is the end of the match, Johnny. Have a look at this. I want to talk to you about this from a coaching perspective. Macedonia get a, uh, a corner, they score, right? Oh. In they go. This means Macedonia. they're going to go through. Yeah, they're going through. They're happy as they can't believe it. They're really, really happy. They're celebrating on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Gibraltar have kicked off. Right now, here they go. <laughs> Down the field, right? He puts the ball in. Goal stands. Weird celebration. The goal stands. This means that Gibraltar win and go through. In the meantime, the referee calls full time. That's it. Gibraltar go through. Bad luck to the other team. You're now. The, I'm putting you in. The, you're now the coach of the team that's just lost because they've over celebrated, mm -hmm. and the other blokes have run up to the other end and, and scored a goal. How the much under, are you swearing at them? Yeah. <laughs> it's the under 16s. What do you say to them? First of all, you wouldn't swear at 16-year-old kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Second of all, you would say you'd, you'd be very upset, but uh, you would say, look, if you're going to celebrate for so long, celebrate in the opposition half so they can't right. kick so off. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. have a set play kind of celebration. Well, well they, they were celebrating in their own half. Yeah. So yeah. then they were able to kick off. But oh, is that the rule? So if you, as soon as you go to your own half, we can kick off. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's why. You are not just a pretty face. <laughs> I don't agree with what the opposition did. That's that's unsportsmanlike. Well, that's, you know, that's what the Gibraltans are like. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're like. They live on a rock. They live on a rock. <laughs> Uh, Johnny, so, mate, best of luck uh, for yep. the rest of the season. You've had a fantastic year on Fox Sports, you should have. be said. You are, you. you are my pick for the Astros next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you please thank Johnny Aloysius? <laughs>